This video is proudly sponsored by Newtype. Tools, accessories, model kits, these guys have it. Hop over to NewtypeHQ.com and use the link below to help this channel out for future builds. Hey, what's going on my dudes and dudettes and welcome back to another exciting build from the good folks from AMT. So, why don't we boldly go where no man has gone before with the 1400 scale USS Enterprise E Sovereign Class Starship from the feature length film Star Trek First Contact. And without further ado, engage! Yo, welcome back my dudes and dudettes to another exciting build from yours truly, Utaku Builder. And if this is your very first time onto this YouTube channel, welcome! So it has been quite some time since I built another Federation Starship onto this YouTube channel. We built the USS Franklin almost two years ago, followed by the USS Enterprise of Star Trek Discovery, but I have always wanted to tackle and build my very first USS Enterprise E. Now I was a bit hesitant at quite some time, and I've had this in my backlog for almost two years, but I figure since it's the beginning of the year, why not get started building the all-time favorite Star Trek USS Enterprise Sovereign Class. Now when this film came out back in 1996, I was not a big fan of the sausage section or the overall art direction but after watching this film multiple multiple times on old school vhs if any of you do and just know what that is i was immediately hooked as a kid and i always wanted to build this model kit but fast forward a couple of decades later, we finally reached the pinnacle point where I can actually build one and we actually get a nice shot of the Enterprise E finally going up against a Borg cube, followed by a nice tight shot of the Enterprise E when it's fully constructed along with its own action base, which is nice. And if the Enterprise E is not your thing, you can actually buy other small little size of these Enterprise starships. Now, enough about that. Let's take a look what's inside the box. As always, you are happily greeted with the instruction manual. <laughs> As you can see here, it's very on reminiscent of what you expect from a Hasa Gala instruction manual, but this one's slightly different because there's an actual level system when it comes to this model kit. That's right, this is level two, which means ages 10 and up. It's gonna require a great deal of skill to put this guy together, which means you're gonna need a good pair of snippers, a handful of sets of sandpaper, and a great deal of really, really good super glue. As you can see here, it's not a very difficult kit to put together. It's very simple. You can get this done in less than a day if you just do a straight up build, but that all changes when you flip it on the other side and you get a complete diagram on how to do some custom painting, where you're gonna be applying the water side decals, and a very simplistic color guide on what needs to be colored. I kind of wish they a little bit more in depth with that, but this is what they had to work with back in the day. The fact that everything was simplified made things a lot more easier and efficient to get things done. And I like the fact that they kept that consistency here with this model kit. Now, enough about that. Let's talk about the most important part about this model kit, the rudders. First one up, we're going to have the main saucer section. And I have to say that the surface detail on here is really, really impressive. Definitely capturing the essence of what the Enterprise looked on the feature they film. And the plastic quality itself, it's pretty darn dense and really sturdy. So there shouldn't be any issue of doing custom drilling. Followed by the main hull, which looks absolutely great. But there's definitely some scuffed up areas in between the main section of the upper and lower body. It's definitely going to require a lot of tender loving care. Followed by the wing section or the pylons for this model kit. Followed by the warp nacelles or the engines of one we'll call it and then i think tucked down in there is the action base that comes apart with it it's going to require some custom painting but it shouldn't be a problem at all you get a handful of more little small pieces that go in there followed by the clear runners which are going to be the main rod to hold the model kit upright followed by the first clear runners which are going to be the warp coils followed by the lower bottom is going to be the deflector disc next two are going to be the thrusters are going to be the main saucer section the shuttle bay and the warp nacelles at the very top which is absolutely great now the one thing i love about this model kit that finally wraps things up in a nice little blow are going to be the water slide decals now these decals are anything too special they're pretty much designed to just give you the nice basic look if you want to do like more specific detail on the main hall or around the whole entire body you're going to need to do an extensive amount of research on what particular grades you're going to need to make it look just like all of the film now this can be a bit confusing because the enterprise e has been shown in three feature length film which means that the design aztecs have been drastically shifted between each individual film so you have to be very careful of which will go where and how you want to present it towards the very end Overall, this is going to be a very exciting build, and I can't wait to get started putting some custom LEDs in this bad boy. So 
So as always, before I get started building this model kit, I want to tackle two sections at a time. And the one I want to focus on the most is the main saucer section because this is going to require a three LED light system. As you can see here, there are two little divots on each side for both navigational lights and one for a strobe LED light for both sides of the saucer section, as well as one in the far back next to the bridge, which is absolutely great. In the very front, there is no strobe light. It's going to be just a single white LED to make that part pop out. Now, for the main registration to look at the very front, that's going to require a lot of trickery when it comes to pulling this effect off. The idea is to completely mask that area off from the very top and the very bottom of the saucer section so that we can pull off that wear registration effect. You can't do it with a single LED light because it's not going to pull off the effect. Now, when it comes to the actual windows, this is going to require a two-step system. And it's going to be actually kind of difficult because, as you can see here, my original plan was to actually completely mask it out with a flat black. And then when I got it just the way I wanted, I then was going to go in there with an actual fine little toothpick to actually hollow out each individual window. The problem is the plastic's really, really dense and it makes things very difficult to actually put a very bright LED light in specific heat areas. And I want to help like reduce that to just a handful. So the next best option to actually pull off that effect is actually doing the try and true method is actually drilling small little holes into each individual window. Not every window is going to be drilled, but just one enough to actually pull off the effect the way I want it. Now to do this, I'm going to use my try and true tool to actually drill each individual, but that can put a lot of strain on my wrist over time. So Luckily enough, my wife bought me a very, very handy tool that can actually get the job done by using these very, very small little dremels that actually go at the very tip of this and requires a nice little drill pump system. As you can see here, it's nicely spring loaded. That way it makes things less difficult on your wrist, but at the same time, it keeps the drilling part very consistent, which actually creates less of an issue to drilling holes through and through and more of a chance to actually really enjoy the kit overall. Alright, now that the windows are fully done, it's now time to mask out the area that's going to be illuminating the registry number for the Enterprise. Now to pull off this effect, I'm going to be grabbing close to three to four little strips of Tamiya masking tape and then try to position them in a nice cone shape. Now when you're doing this, make sure you mask out the top and the very bottom because if you don't do it correctly, you're not going to create that awkward light bleeding effect to illuminate the saucer section. Take your time and don't rush it. Alright, now that these bad boys are finally done, it's now time to mask these dudes with some black primer. Now I'm going to be hitting both sides of these saucer sections with black primer, and then to wrap things up for both top and bottom of the saucer section, I'll be hitting up with Tamiya Light Grey. I would really recommend using Tamiya Sky Grey to pull off the effect instead of Tamiya Grey Primer.
All right, now we can finally get started doing some more LED installation, both on the navigational lights as well as sections around the bridge. Now, now I'm gonna be using two little systems. I'm gonna be using a fiber optic lighting for the very front of the ship as well as the very back of the bridge section. I can't put any fiber optic lighting on the side of the actual saucer section because there's not enough cavity space in there to work with. So, and the opposite I'm gonna be doing there is gonna be putting two Pico LED lights on both sides for navigation green and blue. And for the strobe lights, they're gonna have their own independent LED lights on the side as well. I've already tried this effect already on the lower bomb section, which actually pull off the effect beautifully. But since this area is gonna require a great deal of tender loving care, I wanted to see if the effect pull off beautifully with two different types of fiber optic setups. As you can see here, I already put fiber optic tubing on the very bottom section of the saucer section while already installing the strobe and effect. And as you can see here, the strobing effect is very, very subtle, but it's exactly what you would see in the feature lane film. And I'm very, very happy that I was able to pull off that effect. So you're gonna be repeating the exact same thing on top of the saucer section and pull off that same strobing effect. Alright, now we reach the next challenging part of this model kit, and that's actually putting an LED light strip. I'm gonna be using Evans Design's 26 mega LED light strips on around specific heat areas on around the saucer section. Now I know there are a lot of people that put a crap ton of LED lights inside the main saucer section so you can illuminate every single window. I want to keep it just settled to the point where it looks just nice, not too everly blown out. Another little added bonus I'm gonna add around the main thrusters is gonna be these nice little photo etching grill sections on top of the main thrusters. Now, of course, you can do this by hand and painting it, but I personally like this little added little effect that makes them look really really authentic so if you have the extra couple of bucks get these photo etching pieces for this model kit you will not be disappointed All right, that's just looking really, really nice. Now time to add some nice little fine detail around the phaser array. So I'm gonna be using the classic German gray to actually paint those areas out. And then to make this work really, really good, I'm gonna use my Leonard paint brush tip to make that area look really nice and clean. Now we finally reached the fun part of this model kit and that's going to be putting the water slide decals but just like how I mentioned earlier on the video this is going to make things quite difficult on which version of the Enterprise you really want to paint. So we are going to go with a color scheme from Star Trek Nemesis. Now the reason why I go with this one because it was actually easy to find on eBay but at the same time they were quite affordable. The challenging part is going to be deciding what color scheme I go with the escape pod. I'm going to be leaning towards the more orange color instead of the flat yellow. Next thing up is actually great about these water slide decals. They come with their own instruction on how to apply them onto the surface but these water slide decals are drastically different 
everything like you would expect from Tamiya or any other third party model kit that makes these guys because these water slave decals don't have that sticky residue on the very bottom. So you're going to be required to use Mr. Mark Setter and Mr. Mark Softener. The reason why you want to use those two together is because Mark Setter has that sticky residue substance that's missing from these water slide decals and the Mr. Mark Softener will actually melt the actual water slide decals to the point where it'll blend in beautifully on top of the surface detail. So this section is going to be exactly the same like how we did the saucer section, following through with areas that I want to designate to be drilled through and then clean it up with a nice Dremel tool. Now there are times that the Dremel tool can be inconsistent, so I'm going to be bouncing between a hand Dremel and then an electric Dremel so I can get nice clean consistent cuts in between each individual window. All right, now that these bad boys are ready to be painted, I need to take a step back and evaluate which areas are gonna be slightly problematic. As I can tell in the midsection of the Enterprise, this section in the middle part is gonna be blocked off with any kind of light piping that's gonna lead into this main back section. I don't wanna sneak in a mega LED light in there because it's gonna look really, really awkward, and plus the plastic's really, really dense. I'm gonna try a way to fix that area by hollowing out with a nice Dremel tool. Alright, now that these pieces are finally prepped to be installed for LED lights, the next challenging part is actually going to be funneling electrical wiring from the main body to these main pylons. Now, these pylons are not designed to actually house any kind of electrical wiring, so that's when the Dremel tool comes into play. I'm going to be using this particular Dremel tool to hollow out a designated area so that way I can funnel electrical wiring from the main body to the main warp nacelles. This part is a little tricky, but it requires a great deal of patience because as you can see here, there's not much of like space there inside the plastic, so when you do this, just Gently, gently take your time and grew out those sections very carefully because you only get one shot and there's only one chance of building this enterprise and you don't want to mess it up.
So, now that the pylons are finally wired up, it's now time to install some mega LED light sections. Now, I'll talk about the main deflector just later, but this is the part that's going to be really tricky. I want to place these mega LED lights on top of the section inside the main hall. Now, you could put more LED lights in there. You could put some, like, diffusion plastic in there to make the windows pop out the way how you want it. But I want to keep the lighting consistent to the point where it'll be bright everywhere. As I mentioned earlier on the video, just putting a basic mega LED light on top of the section really blows it out. So what I'm gonna end up doing is actually drilling in a small little concave hole in there so that way I can funnel more light from the main cavity space upward to the main section while still sneaking in one mega LED light to illuminate that section. Now, when it comes to the deflector disc, this is where things get very difficult because this particular piece needs to be fully installed for LED lights and ready to go to be installed inside the main body because the whole entire thing needs to be painted. So to help alleviate this issue from it being painted over, I'm using Vallejo's liquid mask. Now, this liquid mask stuff is really, really good. What it essentially does, it creates like a nice soft rubbery latex texture over the protected area and it dries very, very fast. On top of that, it won't cause any paint chipping or any paint scraping or any kind of paint pulling. It does the job beautifully. Now, the biggest challenge is once this is fully installed is light bleeding. It is very apparent around the main deflector dish as well as the stomach of this molecule. So that's when Vallejo Plastic Putty plays into this particular role because it has its own designated tube. That way it can funnel a consistent flow of putty into designated areas while keeping things clean and consistent. My recommendation, once you get it done onto the particular molecule, let it sit and dry for about two to three hours and then go in there with a very light sandpaper to get rid of all the regular resin that's left afterwards. Oh yeah, this thing's looking really, really good. Now to add more fine detail around the main deflector disc, once again, we're gonna be digging back into the realm of photo etching pieces. Now there are gonna be two different types of photo etching. One is gonna be at the very bottom and one is gonna be for the very top for the deflector dish. Now, I know there's a handful of you dudes and dudes that are asking yourself, why did you put the strobe LED light in the far back of the Enterprise when it should be in the midsection? The reason for that is because the water slide decals would tend to get into the way, so I ended up putting in the far back instead of in the far middle. Other than that, it still looks great and it looks beautiful. All right, my dudes and dads, we have finally reached the final frontier of this model kit, and that's going to be working on the warp engines. Now, the warp engines are going to definitely require a great deal of customization, especially around specific strobe lights around the engine of the warp to sell, as well as cutting out this hollow out area to put in some LED lights into the main engine assembly. Now, this part can be problematic because it's going to be require a great deal of custom cutting and drilling. Another area that's customizable, put an LED light into that midsection, which is optional, and at the same time, trying to figure out how many LED lights are going to be fitted into that this midsection. It can be problematic, and as you can see here for my brother type it didn't go too well the LED lights created awkward hot spots and at the same time there was tons of light bleeding so I ended up having to buy another kit to pull off this problem so if you first don't succeed try again
Okay, my dudes and dudes, we have finally reached a part of this model kit that can prove to be a challenge, but at the same time, can prove to be slightly problematic. And what I mean by that is, we're going to be using my try and tool tool, the Dremel Disc. Now, this Dremel Disc is absolutely great when it comes to cutting into thick and thin plastic. However, when cutting into thick and thin plastic, it creates shrapnel. And when it creates shrapnel, that can be harmful for your eyes. So when working with this tool, please, please wear some heavy duty goggles because your eyesight is precious and your health is always viable when it comes to building this model kit. So always safety up when you're working with this tool. Alright my dudes and does. now we hit the most critical part of this model kit and that's going to be light diffusion and as you can see here with a 3mm bulb, it tends to stick out like a sore thumb. So to help reduce that effect, we're going to be defrosting this particular clear runner just like how you see here to hide the LED light to look really good. Now to do this, we're going to be using some P3000 grit sandpaper, particularly a gray sponge, and then go into a circular and a left and right motion to defrost this particular clear runner so that we can hide that LED light from illuminating. This is actually going to create a great deal of surfaces so that we can hit in a nice flat white behind that clear runner to create even more more like diffusion. All right, my dudes and dudes. Now we can finally talk about LED installation inside the actual engine assembly. Now, before I did that, I had to actually do some custom painting around this grill. So what I ended up doing is painting this with a nice Tamiya clear blue, and then behind the clear blue, I would hit it up with a nice Tamiya flat white. That would help create light diffusion and help reduce any kind of awkward hotspots. Now, just like with my first attempt, it created awkward hotspots when the LED lights were too far apart. So how do I rectify that problem? It's very simple. I just went to my local hardware store and bought a small little strip of balsa wood to put all the LED lights onto one track. Not only does it actually creates less hotspots, but it actually creates a nice clean look when the actual LED lights are perfectly housed inside the actual main engine assembly. This probably can be a little bit more difficult at the same time a little bit challenging for those individuals that are not comfortable with this or prefer to use an LED light strip, but I find this method works really really good if you're on a pinch.
All right, my dudes and dudes, as this video is wrapping up, I want to share with you guys my thoughts and impressions about this model kit. And man, oh man, this was such a refreshing kit to build and such a great way to kick off 2022, my dudes, because Starship designs are great and it's always good to change up your games when you're making content on YouTube. I mean, Gundam kits will always be around and I will constantly keep making content for Gundam model kits, but switching things up is such a refreshing feeling because you tend to learn a lot of new things. And the one thing I learned a lot building this model kit was learning how to properly hide seam lines. Some parts I did pretty good, other parts I could improve upon, but that's the wonderful thing about trying different kits is just improving and perfecting your style to get cleaner and better results. And this model kit does a great job of actually educating you on how to do that correctly. Now, for some that actually buy this kit right off the bat, there are gonna be some things that are a little distracting. For starters, the plastic control on this kit isn't that great. It's very scuffed up in a lot of uh, specific areas around the saucer section as well as the main body. And it clearly shows that this thing is pumped out on an assembly line. So plastic control is gonna be very, very awkward for some people that are buying this kit for their very first time. But someone for that's like experienced builder like myself, it's not a problem. But if there was one thing I would downplay this model kit is the instruction manual when it comes to the color guide. It's very, very simplistic. It would have been helpful if it would give like a frame of references on what specific darks and light grades that you can use in the marketplace. But to me, it's always constantly changing their color temperature over time. And that goes double when it comes to their clear paints. I made a mistake on the deflector dish paint in orange when in reality, it's supposed to be a clear yellow. So that's my bad on that part for not doing enough research. On top of that, when it comes to the main color hall, I would recommend use a sky gray instead of the Tamiya gray primer. I went with the gray primer because that was like the only thing I had available in my arsenal. Now when it comes to this Dremel tool, it's great, but over repeated use after like three to four hours, there's a great deal of metal shavings that comes out of this tool, which can be a problem. So don't work with this tool. Just do it the old school way. Now my overall experience with this model kit is great, but the skill set is very, very diverse on who this is really for. Is it really meant for beginners? around age 10 and up, absolutely. If they're just doing a straight up build and they're doing some like custom painting, you'll have a blast. But for those that are like seasoned vets, those that want to make something close to like a movie prop, that's where things get very expensive because you're jumping from a $50 price tag up to like something 170 to $200 because now you're thinking about water slide decals, Aztec decals, LEDs, what's a better proper action base compared to the one that comes with this model kit. The list goes on, especially when it comes to buying paints. The list just keeps on going. But that's the wonderful thing about this model kit is if you're you're pushing yourself more and more and more on getting better at what you're really good at. And that's the one thing, wonderful thing I love about these Starship designs is because I'm always learning something new and it's super, super exciting to finally build two successful Starships. And now I am ever so close to getting to the one Starship I want to build. Uh, my whole entire life. I'm not quite there yet, but I'm almost there. <laughs> but as that being said, thank you dudes and dudes for watching this video. Do appreciate the likes, comments, and subscribes. If you guys do me a favor, please give this video a thumbs up. Helps the channel tremendously. And as always, I will see you dudes and do that on the next build.